Good afternoon, everybody. I'm Lloyd Skinner, the CEO of Greyfly.ai. Uh, we've uh, built an intelligent project prediction platform that uses AI to deliver project intelligence to uh, executives to increase project success. Today, I'm going to have a quick chat with Melissa Drew. I'll let Melissa introduce herself in one second, and we're going to talk about her views around AI in project management. Um, Melissa, would you like to, good afternoon to you, and, and would you like to introduce yourself? Yes, thank you. Um, pleasure. Thank you for inviting me. My name is Melissa Drew. I've got 28 years of procurement and supply chain experience. I've been working with data since 1995, working with AI technology since around well, 2004. I'm a founding member of the Women Leaders in Data and Artificial Intelligence, and I also have a podcast on the impact of data and AI. Fantastic. You sound like the perfect person to speak to, <laughs> and in particular, not, not just around project management, but maybe the wider world as well. But we, we, we're here to talk about AI and project management. Yep. So my, my, my first question is, you know, from your perspective, what, what, what use cases do you see about AI and project management? So when I when I look at project management, I I spent 10 years um, writing and teaching project management um, and principles of project management to procurement, supply chain, and other organizational professionals. And what I've noticed is that when we think about project management and we talk about use cases, um, if, I, if I step back, you know, the, the components of project management, scope, time, human resource, cost, communications, risk, quality, and then just the organizational knowledge. So if you encompass all of that in a project management tool, then the use cases are endless. And, and when I you know, was thinking about this as you were asking the question, it's any complex project, any long-term project, global projects, projects with multiple work streams. So for example, I have a project you know, program manager and I may have five or six work streams underneath them, each focusing on a different application or a different process. And then also um, on projects where I have a variety and different resources. For example, employees of the organization, consultants that I've hired that know an application, consultants that I hire that may have an industry specific knowledge, a contractor or even you know, a temp person to come in and backfill a role. All of those are the primary use cases in really where this, you know, where project management and project intelligence is is perfect for. It, it like I said before, it's endless. So, 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 so it could be applied to to all of these different types of projects, and and in your words, endless. Mm -hmm. What, 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 you know, how would you apply it? What, what, what's your thinking about how you could use it? So the the whole concept of of AI technologies is to automate the tactical, to allow individuals to be more strategic, to allow them to work on more value added activities. Uh, for example, planning, relationship building, you know, issue management, um, all the things that, that typically they need to work on. And that's where the, the priorities tend to, to lend. Um, being able to communicate upward and downward, you know, are we on budget? How are we going to solve this? What's our contingency plan? I mean, all of that is considered more strategic value added, you know, to activities. But if your project manager or program manager is so focused on the, the tactical level details of managing a task or managing a line item in a project plan, then they're not doing what they really should be doing or what they could be doing to, to really bring this program to a better efficiency and with yeah. better results. I, 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 I love that. So, so you know, I, I often use the term augment the human. I mm -hmm. think that's exactly what you're probing at there. So, mm -hmm. so, so, so what, you know, you, you, obviously you've touched on this, but what sort of benefits do you think there would be? So we, we see, we see this kind of technology in other applications. Excuse me. We see this in other <laughs> applications. Um, but when we look at the predictive analytics, the idea is that we've never been able to, to really look at the prior projects and understand what went wrong and how can we apply them to future projects with, you know, and, and that's just because it was too much data for us to, to you know, try to synthesize. 
it was so much data all at the same time, and we just didn't have the time frame or the scope to be able to recognize the patterns and, and how to create the context from those patterns and then approve on them. So with the AI technologies and the predictive analytics that you mentioned, we're able to assess project data with better informed data fact-driven decisions. We're able to truly understand if the project's behind, on target, or ahead, and then also be able to focus our priorities on where we need to adjust. And then, Brilliant. you know, ultimately this will increase productivity and, and drive efficiencies. Brilliant. So, 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 so data-driven decision-making, mm -hmm. knowledge of where a project outcome is going to be, and, 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 and ultimately cost savings, I guess, if it's driving efficiencies. Yes. Yes, right. so the number one, so I, I work in, in information technology, specifically in IT projects, and the number one problem we have is we didn't spend enough time understanding if we were behind or ahead. We didn't understand how we could really all allocate resources. So if a work stream was ahead, maybe we could take one of those resources and put them on a work stream that was falling behind. Um, we didn't uh, take in context the historical data that we had from other projects and, and pull that in. So every time we had a project, it was almost like recreating the wheel every single time, which ultimately takes time, costs money. Yeah. So for us, you know, in working as, as a you know, program manager, if I had the ability to be able to know when to shift my resources, where to focus my attention, where it, it's needed at most, um, be able to better articulate to a client or to a customer, hey, we're actually falling behind here are the reasons why we're falling behind. Let me talk to you about some options we can do to resolve them. Without understanding that, it, it really comes back to a different conversation. Hey, we're two weeks behind. So in order to make this up, we're gonna need to get another resource, that's a cost. We're gonna need to expand uh, the time frame by two more weeks, that's a cost, both external cost as well as the employee internal cost. Brilliant, brilliant. So ultimately, in increasing the likelihood of success of your projects or your programs. And yeah. and uh, to, Mel, would that differ per sector? You know, different types of projects or different industries. I I don't see that. Um, you know, if I if I look at financial services, where you 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 still have IT projects, but I don't want to say that project management is only focused on IT projects because everything going back to, to the use cases that we outlined before, an IT project doesn't have to be a long-term project. It could be a complete rebranding or you know, redoing the SKUs within a retail company. I mean, there's everything that we do in an organization has some torp of, of beginning, middle and end, a plan, mm. a project that we need to follow with end results. So no, I, I don't see this differing you know, by sector. Brilliant, brilliant. So, so okay. So, obviously, that sounds fantastic. The, the 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 vision that you paint, the benefits that you paint there. But there must be some challenges to implementing AI in project management. What what sort of challenges do you think that that, that they are? I'm I like stories. I like the way a story comes across. So, I'm going to answer that starting with the story, and then I'll fold into the relevance. Um, early in my career. So back in 1998-99, I'm at a client site and I'm in this elevator with an individual and we're talking about, you know, I'm going over to another facility and he tells me he's going home for the day. And so I jokingly, oh, I'd love to know what role you have in the company. I think that would be a great job. And he then informs me that he's the CEO of this global multinational brand company. And yes, I was truly embarrassed at the moment because this is at the beginning of my career. But I was bold enough to ask him, which you know, we then continued to walk out together in the parking lot, help me understand how you're able to do this. And the first thing out of his mouth was good project planning. And this was my early stages of understanding that there is no bad project, only poor project planning. And his and he said, I use the this the structured, you know, program, data driven. I have a, a PMO organization that does nothing but monitor all the projects across the entire globe. I come in every day and I work with them to understand based on the data, which project is ahead. I don't need to talk to them. Which projects on, ta on target? Okay, we'll monitor them. And which projects are behind? 
And the ones that are behind are the ones that I then focus my attention on. And sometimes it's a couple hours, sometimes it's multiple days, sometimes it's multiple weekends. But then every now and then I have a day like today where everybody's doing well and I'm gonna go take a break. And wow. it was the first time that I really understood um, data when it came to project management and recognizing that, that the right date at the right time, but at a time when it's the most impactful is is really relevant and important and then shortly after that i went and got my own pmi my own pmp3 yeah <laughs> well I, I i don't know who it was and i'm not, I'm not asking i don't either was, i don't but, remember but, it but, 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 but what a fantastic story mel thank you for that and, yeah. and really brings to light the the, the, the power that the, the ai might 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 bring but but okay, so 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 we we, we you know the, again that's got the vision. But in terms of 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 you know making that happen and a, and a business adopting AI, you know what what what's stopping a company and and what should they do about that to move things forward? So what's stopping the company is the cultural mindset. You know I call this the the front seat leader, this, the leader that's not sitting back and just letting things slide and getting the paycheck, but a leader that's forward you know up front that's there to help resolve the obstacles which is what i considered this this individual so i've i've kind of probably i've narrowed it down to about three things one is skill sets knowledge um i don't know because i know you're in i'm in the us and you're in the uk but in the 1980s i was you know one of those kids that watched saturday morning cartoons <laughs> and gi joe <laughs> was a cartoon and their slogan was and i I, their slogan was knowing is half the battle, knowledge is power. And I, I pull that back into skill sets. You know, it's, it's one thing to say, I'm going to be a project manager, but if you don't understand the concepts of what good project management is, then you're not going to be able to facilitate and foster a good program. Um, so knowledge and, and skill sets and really understanding the concepts and the breadth and the depth of, of project management. The second is mitigating risk. I, and, and I put myself in this bucket you know, early on in my career, I found that individuals at all skill sets and, and all paths in their career are good at identifying the risks. What they're not good is communicating and articulating it so that un someone understands that not only is this a risk, but here's the impact of that risk if we don't make a decision on it now. And I struggled with that early in my career. I was good, in, and so was my teammates, at knowing where the risk was. And we thought we were communicating it effectively until a month later, our program manager comes back and says, why are we behind? Yeah. And we're like jumping up and down. <laughs> but, but we said, you know, we, every, every week we, we said this was an issue, but we didn't understand how to articulate it correctly. So I, it's not just understanding how to mitigate it, but it's, it's understanding how to communicate it properly and helping people recognize what the impact of the risk is. That's great, it's a risk. How big of a risk? Yeah, yeah. What do we do if, if we don't do anything? And then the third thing is the criteria for success. If we truly don't understand what the criteria for the success of this project is. So what is this project supposed to be doing? when we get to the end of the project, how do we know that this was a successful project? And if you can define those things early on, then mm. anytime you feel that the project is starting to stray, you immediately go back to kind of those guiding principles, those guardrails that you set up, mm. and you can then adjust more quickly instead of completely going off on a tangent and realizing, oh, well, now we're four weeks behind schedule because we started working on something that wasn't directly impacting the success of this project. Brilliant. So to me, those are the kind of the top three things that if, if we can resolve those and then, of course, you know, this wonderful technology that we have in project intelligence, then I think we'll all have a much better, better results. Yeah. So we could enable some of the big problems that we we we, yeah. we, 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 we challenge as well. Just to let you know, uh, GI Joe, uh, we call it Action Man in in the UK. Really? So so so, <laughs> but 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 you know, um, from from that, yeah, knowledge is information. Information mm -hmm. is power. Is is something that that, that 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 I certainly was taught academically. So you know, and and I definitely chime with your point there. And 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 
almost leaping into this understanding zone of mm -hmm. what 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 is capable and, and and what the power of new technology can bring so i totally concur with that um i'm just going to have one last wrap up question if right. i may if, if if there was one takeaway you know if you were in the in in the lift with that chap again mm -hmm. today and, and and you wanted to sell ai in project management to him what what what, what would you say to him um well, I'd like to to answer that with by answering another question you asked earlier. Mm -hmm. When I met him, I thought, oh my gosh, this is the way it should be. And I'm now in 2022 and I've never, and I've done a lot of projects in my life, in my career in the last 28 years. I've never known anybody else to do what he's done. So what I thought back in 1998, 99 was the way it should work. I'm now recognizing that he was truly progressive yeah. and innovative in what he was doing. And what I find challenging at the moment is, you know, people are so focused on, on the short-term budget and not recognizing the long-term value. And so even before the project starts, they're already cutting the budget. They're cutting out change management. And number two on the list is cutting out project management. Yeah. yeah and yeah. people are working in Excel. Uh, people yeah. are not doing anything at all. Yeah. Um, so that right there gives me the best foundation to come back and say, you know, you if you're using a tool with true project intelligence, with AI and predictive analytics, um, the way you're using AI and, you know, everywhere else in your organization, then this should not only be something you don't cut ever in your project going forward, but you're able to really utilize it, I think, better and more efficiently, you're able to keep your resources to a minimum. So you don't need a, a, a 1.5 resources just to do project management. Um, it's giving them the knowledge they need to go in and focus on the things that they need to focus on. Yeah. Um, I mean, I could probably come up with like 15 more reasons yeah, why no. you need to do this. It's, it's, it's almost at the point where the simplest answer is why not? Yeah. I mean, I mean yeah. Uh, I was going to say, Mel, that that chap, if he if, if he was around today, it sounds like, you know, he wouldn't have been leaving in the afternoon. He would have been leaving in the morning if he'd applied this technology in these tools. Yes, because the it goes back to what you said. It's augmenting that that human intelligence. Our, I mean, I, it's hard to say, but our brains can only go so yeah. fast and can only yeah. absorb so much information. And I did a, a speech a month ago we're creating petabytes of data on a daily basis worldwide yeah. and all of that can come into you know different aspects of project planning if you've got a global project that's related you know dependent on weather yeah. that's another variable that can help you better understand your project plan without artificial intelligence in that that project planning we you know within that activity there's no way that we would know these things until it's after the fact or 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 um, reactive, yeah. whereas with the use of the technology, we're now proactive. And I think that's another big difference in with and without the, the AI technology. Brilliant. Well, uh, uh, unfortunately, our time's come to an end because I'd love to keep chatting. I mean, <laughs> I, I mean, absolutely fantastic insights, Mel. So, 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 thank you so much for sparing the time to speak to us. Uh, um, and and best of luck. Um, and and do dial into what's the name of your podcast? Uh, impact of AI and data. Oh, there you go. Please, please listen out to that for that people. Excellent. Good afternoon. Thank now. you. Cheers now.